Hello, I'm Alexis and I'm Mrs. Book Dragon and this is my YouTube channel. Thanks for being here. Uh, so I'm here to talk about the year in my reading and, you know, talk about some things that I'm proud of and some goals for next year. I have tried to record this like three times. The first time I ended up almost breaking my toe. Second time I recorded everything and then it didn't save. So here I am again, and it's probably going to be really short because I'm just done. Um, some things I'm proud of this year, I, you know, I've uh, started a podcast, Read to Write Kidlet, and uh, that one, we have a book club and we read a book as a writer would and just look at craft and things like that. And then we generate questions and my friends and I we talk to the author and put it on a podcast at the end of the month. And it's a lot of fun. I love talking with books with other people. So it's a cool focused book club, not just, you know, nothing wrong with just entertaining book clubs, but it's a very focused book club about writing. And then I'm also proud of my Legit Kid Lit YouTube channel. It's going on three years and it's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm pretty proud of all the things that we've been able to do to support Kidla authors in that space. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at my reading stats. This is from my year in books.com. And it's a lot of fun to do. It's the first time I've done that. And then I'll share my top 12 books. And then I'll just kind of play a cozy, you know, some music and you can look at the rest of my reads. I always make a Canva template graphic of my books that I've read and so it's kind of fun to go back through and see like how I designed those and how I set them up. So I read 206 books. I feel like I read 209 according to Goodreads but whatever. 109,018 minutes read which is 75 days. I do read every day at least five minutes before I fall asleep. Um, it's just something I have to do before I fall asleep. It's become a a very strong habit and even if it's like one page like I, I have to pick up my kindle at night and I've done that for a long time then uh so my top genres are young adult fantasy and middle grade I definitely this year so the past couple years I've been very middle grade focused picture book focused because that was my job was a middle grade middle school English teacher and so reading for them and reading picture books with them and and using that in our writing and all of those things were important to me. And now I teach computers <laughs> to middle schoolers. And so I still love middle grade books um, and picture books, but I kind of just read for myself this year. And that was young adult fantasy. Um, my reading vibes was adventurous, which goes with the fantasy vibes. And um, those are three of my five star reads. I, here's the thing about five star. I pretty much give everything five stars. So Yeah. I, I'm all about supporting authors and unless it's like troublesome problem, like there's a problem with the book, I really don't like giving it anything lower than four. So I tend to give five stars all the time. Four or five. Um, in about 10 or 15 minutes, can we put my cows on? Something else I'm really proud of is that I got to be a part of Sybil Awards and I got to, I was on the panel for Young Adult Speculative Fiction, which was perfect for me. So that is another reason, you know, young adult was so huge is that's just been my focus this year. And I don't, I don't hate it. I loved it. Okay. So let's move on to my top 12 books this year. I had a really good reading year and so many that I loved and it was hard to choose 12. I could have probably chosen 12 from each young adult, adult and middle grade, but I just chose 12 total. Um, but it was, it was hard and you'll see in the rest of the video, you know, some of my other top reads are my top choices per age category. Um, but these are what I've decided are my top 12. So, uh, the first, well, these aren't in any order, but well, actually they're oh, monthly order, but in January I read Our Missing Hearts and that book needs to be read by more people. It's dystopian, which I did not know going into it. This is the author of Little Fires Everywhere, 
which is not dystopian. And then she also wrote another YA, Everything I Never Told You, which is not dystopian. So I went into this thinking it was realistic. And then it had this flip and it was about being a, like there was motherhood in it, which I think is something in fire, little fires everywhere. Um, there was, I don't even know. Like, well, if I remember right, there's a lot. Okay, so it's kind of like a after COVID kind of thing, maybe. And there's a lot of Asian hate and how people just like violence everywhere against Asians. And it was, <laughs> it was a hard book to read at some points, but really fantastic. And the twists in it, I kind of want to read it again, but there's too many books to read again. Um, but I might, who knows? I really. I really love this book and I think more people need to read it. Um, another one I read, We Are All So Good at Smiling, Amber McBride. This is a book in verse and this is young adult. Amber McBride writes fantastical verse with mental health representation and just the twists in it are ridiculous and me Moth was one of my favorite books last year, and so to have another one of hers as my favorite is no surprise. And she has another one, a middle grade book out. I can't think of what it's called, but I have it upstairs ready to read it because I think it's Wolf, Gone Wolf, and uh, but I don't think that one's in verse. Anyway, she is spectacular. Highly recommend. Babel, another one of my favorites. I savored this one. I believe I started it in December, finished it in March, and I just like... So many places I tabbed and underlined, so many topics discussed language and race and colonialism and education and family and there's violence and how sometimes is violence the answer and ooh, feminine, uh, feminism, all the things. I, I loved Babel. It's, it's a good one and I'm glad I didn't rush it. The Ballad of Never After is my favorite Stephanie Garber book right now. Um, I haven't read all of the Caravelle series, but this one, the ending, mm, and just the fairy tale vibes are so good. It's so good. <laughs> Jax and Evelyn forever. Um, You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight is by Kaylin Barron, which is one of my favorite YA authors. I will read anything by her. And this is a great, like, camp setting. Um, they're in a, they run this, um, like, horror slasher kind of interactive thing that people can go through and ends up being real. And it had, it had just, it was a perfect slasher. That's just what it is. It reminded me of Scream. It reminded me of a lot of the movies I watched growing up that were super scary and slasher. And horror is everything that I look for in those books. <laughs> By the way, this is my squirtle that I, from breaking my toe, my daughter has set me up with, on the couch with. And then this is Twix. Say hi, Twix. Yeah, he likes to wake you up at 3 a.m. I love you. I love you, though. And his little old man eyebrows, if you can see him, when the light hits just right. Okay, Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels is by far one of my most, like, good time books. That, I, I wanted to read the series, I want to continue it, but I wanted to buy them so I can, like, really mark up the pages. Because this book just had so many lines that I loved, and it's, it's a Wuthering Heights, like, a lot of Wuthering Heights references in this one, and I think the next one is another Jane, it's a Jane Austen book, um, Sense and Sensibility, maybe. I don't think it was Pride and Prejudice references. Oh, I just, I started it and then I stopped because I want to buy it. Um, <laughs> gosh, I love that book. I love that book so much. Like, I want to go back and reread it. And I, I will. Divine Rivals, another one that I just, I almost reread before reading Ruthless Vows, but I just watched a YouTube video on a, on a recap, um, just to remember, I might read the last chapter or two when everything was like really hairy. Warrior Girl Unearthed is a book that will make you a better person. It will make you, it will open your eyes on issues with indigenous peoples. There's a lot on the murdered and missing um, indigenous women. And 
a lot on museums and artifacts and it's a good mystery and thriller uh it ties in with fire um, firekeeper's daughter which is also by the same author and it was also a really important read i just think everyone should read these and i need it makes me want to read more about indigenous or from indigenous peoples about indigenous life and not always the tough stuff not always you know i every day life is good too but i just don't know enough about what's happened and there was some about the school, the board school, the boarding schools, the language that's been taken away from them. The in Firekeeper's Daughter, the issue with criminals and crime. Ugh. They're they're good books. Um, a good one for a book club to talk about. Probability of everything I can remember when I finished that book. I was walking down my driveway and trying to finish it. I was taking my daily walk and needed to finish it for a book club. And I was sobbing, sobbing this book. There is a point, there is a page that when you get to it, it changes everything. And I love books like that. I love just unexpected slap me across the face. What just happened? Um, and it's hard to describe this book. Like I, I, I don't want to describe it to you because it will ruin it, but it's just a girl missing her father and that's that I guess is all I can say the dead romantics was another great romantic time nothing like too deep in that um the dead jokes were fun the puns were fun and it was just a good it was just a good book gleanings was a great book about death and society and Schusterman that's what he writes is books on society and exploring questions and issues in our world that we face and the Scythe series is about death and science and so the Gleanings was in the collection of short stories that kind of explored some backstory to some of the Scythes some other stories and the coolest thing though was the he included other authors, including his daughter and his um, son. And so that was really cool. And then finally, the last book that I just absolutely loved was The Queen of Nothing. I loved the Holly Black series. Apparently, it, she was my top author, as said in the, the wrap-up in my year in books. And um, it was a good ending to the trilogy. It really was the Cruel Prince tri trilogy. I really, I really liked it. And I'm happy with it. I'm happy that series is, you know, you've got Stephanie Garber and then you've got Holly Black. And they're two great fantasy authors. Sorry, I'm falling. And, but you approach them with different things. Ser Stephanie Garber is like the fairy tale and just whimsical. And I get lost in that world. And then the Cruel Prince, Holly Black's is like, war and um just violence and uh, politics and along with the fairy tale vibe so just really cool really good books okay that is those are my top 12 books of the year i would love to hear what your books are and if you've read any of these or you know if i would like something else you know drop it in the comments and now i'm going to kind of go through my monthly uh, graphics and then that's the end uh, for this year coming up you know I'm looking forward to maybe journaling more I used to journal a lot with my reading and I hope to bring that back um, I really want to be intentional with my books and take my time and savor them I tend to rush and read I just I'm a book dragon I have to have every book I have to read every book and I have such anxiety over not reading every book and I just need to take a breath and, and slow down. My word this year is slow. Slow and controlled and focused and just enjoy. Enjoy life. And so it may be less this year. I don't really know. Um, but I'm not, not going to stress myself out about my reading. I also hope to get my booktube off. So thanks for watching it because I only have like 21 subscribers right now. And um, 
it's fine. It is what it is. I don't have that many videos either, but I would love to kind of explore this more often. So, okay. I think we're ready for a good cuddle session, a good nap. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and all the things. And if you're a booktuber, leave me your, your link and I would love to watch. Take care. Happy reading. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow.